all right guys welcome back in the last video we learned about tokenization which is basically splitting a sentence into different words and we learned how to remove stop words that are not important for natural language processing in this video we are going to learn about nlp emotion algorithm so this is the process through which we are going to be analyzing emotions and how much they are present inside our text file so currently our text file is very very short let's expand it a little bit and before even we do that let's find out what this emotions.txt file is what i want you to do is go through github.com r3abhat sentiment analysis and just download this emotions.txt file you can just click on it and then copy the all the value over here you can also just just go to raw and just copy and paste this create a new text file inside your project and just paste this as emotions.txt file Anyways, this text file contains words and what kind of emotion they represent. So for example, if we use a word like victimized inside this read.txt file, then the emotion that it will present is being cheated. And similarly with other words, for example, let's say conned is cheated and let's go with down. I'm feeling down. So it represents those, this word down represents the word or the emotion of sad. So this is basically a text file which contains a lot of words and the emotion that they represent. We are going to be using this emotions.txt file to find out which words represent which emotions by reading our read.txt file and also reading our emotions.txt. So if we go through the NLP emotion algorithm, first step is check if the word in the final word list, that is the final words that we have created over here, the final words right now are love and Python. We have to check whether these love and Python are in the word list or not. So currently the word list is victimized, accused, acquitted. And if they exist, so for example, let's change our read.txt to something else. Let's just write, I feel victimized. Let's just copy the victimized word because I might mess up the spelling. But anyways, I'll just write, I feel victimized because my current boyfriend cheated on me. I'm a guy, so I should probably write girlfriend, but anyways, whatever. So I feel victimized because my current boyfriend cheated on me. So let's just run this and see what kind of final words we get. So I'm just gonna run this file and you can see the words are feel, victimized, current, the current spelling is wrong, boyfriend and cheated. So I've seen the list, I think uh, victimized is represented in emotions.txt. So we'll just check whether the feel word is present in this list or not. So we can just write feel over here and you can see it's not present. So we'll just ignore this word. The second word is victimized, which is present at the top and the current, which is not. And then the boyfriend, it's not. Let's find out if the cheated is present. Cheated is an emotion, but basically we can also search for like whether it's a word or not and you can see cheated is just the emotion of cheated so we have two words over here victimized and cheated that give us the emotion of cheated so first step is going to be basically seeing if any of the words in our final list match up with the words over here in emotions.txt file but not the second words that are separated by this colon so we are just going to be checking whether the first before this colon all this list that is before colon is in final words or not and then we'll go to the second step which is if the word is present when we are checking if the word is present then we are going to add the emotion to emotion underscore list here we are going to create another list empty list called emotion underscore list and if for example in our example the victimized word is present over here and in our final list so you can see this is the final list and victimized is present in our final list so we'll check whether the final word is present over here or not and if it is present we are going to store this emotion inside our empty emotion list as you can see in the second step and then finally we are going to count each emotion in the emotion list so for example the victimized and cheated both gave us the emotion of cheated so we are going to count it out so cheated is there two times so we are going to count it out and also print that inside our code so this is the nlp emotion algorithm so we'll just if the read.txt file is really really big instead of just one sentence it contains a lot of uh, emotions for example we have right now we have two emotions cheated but we can also kind of like increase it let's say but now i feel happy because obviously they broke up but anyways so happy is another emotion so we have cheated two emotions and happy is one emotion so we can according to that make a kind of a graph bar graph showing which emotions are present the most so in this sentence in this uh, read.txt file the cheated emotion is present as the dominant emotion but anyways we are kind of getting ahead of ourselves so we're just going to focus on the first step in this video that is checking if the word in the final word list is also present in emotion.txt 
text. So the first step is just opening the emotion file. So let me just minimize this. And what we are going to do is we are going to write with open because we want to open a file and we are going to write the name of the file. If your file name is a little bit different, our file name is emotions.txt. So if you have a different file name, make sure you write that. But in our case, it's just emotions.txt. And I would just want to read the file and not make any changes to it. So I'm just going to write R that is read only mode. And then I'm going to save the contents of this file as a variable called as file. You can change the variable name, but if you want to follow along, just call it file. So now all the contents of this emotions.txt file are saved inside this file variable. Now what we want to do is loop through these lines one by one and that is pretty easy in python you just write for line and this is line is just a variable and we're going to loop through this file so we're just going to write for line in file and this line variable will give us all the different lines that are present in this file so let me just print this out for you so that you guys understand what is happening over here and you guys can also print it so i'm just going to print this main.py file and you can see all the different lines are over here but you can see that after each line there is space over here so what we are going to do is we are going to remove the space because every time it goes to a new line it has all this extra space so we want to remove all of that space and then we want to remove this comma we need to remove this single quote and all these things we need to clear them out so the next step over here is loop through each line and clear it so we are going to clear it so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a new variable over here and i'm just going to call it clear line because we are clearing a line one by one because this is a for loop and we are going through each line at each iteration but anyways what we are going to do is we are going to take this line so right now i'm just going to write line dot and we are going to replace it with something else so the first thing we are going to replace is this new line all this extra space over here and a new line in python is represented by this character of backslash n so we are going to replace all this new line with a single empty character so the second parameter is this dot replace function needs is what do you want this new line to be replaced with we just need to replace it with nothing so this is just nothing we don't want anything it to be replaced with if you put a space over here it will be replaced by a single space character but we don't want that so now we are just going to print this clear line out so that you guys can see what's happening over here so I'm just going to print this out, print clear line. Let me just copy and paste this and I'm going to run this again so that you guys can see what's happening. Now you can see that between each line, there is no extra space. Now let's replace this comma with emptiness and this line is going to be just all cleared out. I'm going to write dot replace again. And now instead of new line, I'm just going to put in a comma and we want this thing to be replaced with nothing and then again we are going to write dot replace and we want to remove this uh, single quote over here but we can't just write single quote because it will get confused so we're going to write double quotes and inside this double quote we are going to write a single quote we want to remove this single quote and again we want it to be replaced with nothing and you can't put a single quote over here because otherwise uh, it will become very confusing for python for python interpreter and they won't know what to do so for example if you just write single quotes and inside that you again put a single quote it's just gonna be weird as you can see so you need to put double quotes and inside this you can just put in a single quote you can all do this with all of them but just for the sake of this video i've done it with double quotes actually just to make it less confusing i'm just going to replace all of this uh, with double quotes so that you guys don't get confused let me just remove this put a double quote over here also so you can also put single quotes over here, but just because I'm using a single quote over here, I need to make sure that outside it are double quotes so that our interpreter doesn't get confused. And now we can just print this out. And one last thing I want to do is remove the extra space at the front and at the back. At the back, there is no extra space, but I just want to make sure. So this extra space behind it, that's what we want to remove. So, and that is done very easily by using the dot strip function of Python. So now let's just uh, clear this out as you can see, and you can press Control Alt and L on your keyboard to make sure that everything is formatted properly. But anyways, after doing that, let's just print this main.py file again so you can see how it looks like. Now you can see all of the text has been cleared out. And now finally we can separate the word and the emotion and how do you do that it's very easy you're just going to write word comma emotion and then we are going to split it using this colon so anything that is before this colon is going to be saved in this variable of word and after that is going to be stored in this variable of emotion so how do you do that we're just going to use our clear underscore line so this clear underscore line is going to be stored one by one so first we are dealing with vivacious and happy 
at the first iteration of the loop and what we want is to split it by using this colon over here. So inside this single quote, I'm just gonna put in a colon. So what this line does is it goes to this line and then it looks for this character of colon and anything after this character is stored inside this word of emotion, this variable of emotion and anything before this character of colon is stored inside this variable of word. And now that we have our word, we can actually check whether our final word list is inside this word or not or whether they are common or not. So what we are going to do is right now I'm just going to print this word. So I'm just going to write word and this checking whether the final word this uh, word is present or not I'm going to be doing in the next video. So what right now I'm just going to just want to print out the word and the emotion so that you guys can understand properly what's happening over here. I'm just going to print out word and then I'm going to put uh, extra space over here and then I'm just going to print out the emotion. And after that, I'm just going to write, uh, let's write this and I'm going to print out the emotion variable. So let's run our main.py file again. And uh, yeah, everything looks good. Let's run our main.py file and you'll be able to see what's happening. So you can see that the word has been printed up, worked up and the emotion of that is angry. So now we can properly separate the word and the emotion. In the next video, we're finally going to be doing the second step. That is if the word is present, add the emotion to the emotion list. That is check whether our final word list is equal to this word or not. If it is present, then we can add it to our emotion underscore list, empty list, which we are going to be creating in the next video. So I'll see you over there.